Academics, through their knowledge, keep governments, as it were, on their mettle. And academics can question government policy directly. And in that sense, academic freedom is a freedom not of the few, but for the many, insofar as it encompasses everyone. Professor Terence Caron, Professor of Higher Education Policy at the University of Lincoln. As part of my research, I undertook a comparative study of the protection for academic freedom of its four elements, freedom to teach, freedom for research, tenure and also university autonomy in each of the states of the European Union. Well, my findings were that certain particular countries, interestingly enough, ex-communist countries, protect academic freedom because they rewrote their constitutions. At the very bottom list, unfortunately, with nil point, was the United Kingdom and just above that, Denmark. My research was published, this was then picked up in the Danish press. As a result, the Danish education minister, Helga Sanger, came under increased criticism within Parliament for the fact that academic freedom wasn't protected in law. The Danish Universities Professional Association made an appeal to UNESCO. As a result of this, eventually, the Danish government was forced to have an external evaluation of the law, and that evaluation indicated the law should be changed. And finally, the law was indeed changed. The change of law was only slight, but it was ne nevertheless definitive in that it indicated that academics should have much more freedom to determine the areas in which they undertake research. It wasn't as much as the Danish University Lectures Professional Association would have liked, but it was, they admitted, a step in the correct direction. On the basis of this research, which has now spanned four different articles, I wrote a very uh, credible bid for funding from the European Union for a Marie Curie Incoming International Fellow. I have a colleague coming from the University of Ghana who's going to spend two years here looking at academic freedom in the African states. In addition, I obtained another grant from the same source for an intra-European fellow who is coming from the University of Munich to study academic freedom in Europe. He'll be looking at the difference between the de jure and the de facto protection of academic freedom in all the EU states.